Nigeria needs me. And guess who sang that? Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And INEC declares about 45% of new voter registrations. Registrations invalid. And the ongoing voter registration exercise. This is Plus Politics and I'm Kofi Bartels. Welcome, former Lagos State Governor and All Progressives Congress Presidential Aspirant Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu has said Nigeria needs him just as he needs Nigeria. He also maintained that he has contributed more than other persons contesting for the presidency. Tinubu said Nigeria has all it takes, the brilliance, resources, focus, but lacks the know-how to run the race and gear of the process. He also said, stated that um, his joy will not be full if Nigeria's passport is not one that he will be proud of, while stating that he was pushing for the support of former speakers and their deputies uh, for him to be elected president of Nigeria in 2003, as, as he says, he has all it takes to make Nigeria prosperous. Now, according to Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, he has done it in the past in Lagos State, and he can replicate it with Nigeria as a whole. Now, can he really do as he says? Join us to discuss this tonight on Plus Politics. We'd like to say welcome to Francis Chilaka and uh, Shola Oyekomi. They're both political analysts. analysts. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. All right. All right. We have... Um, so, so what do you say, um, sir, regarding the accession by Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is one of the aspirants under the APC that Nigeria needs him. Does Nigeria need Tinubu? Let's start from there. Um, well, um, let, let me start by saying that, yes, Bola Tinubu as a Nigerian, um, going by the flawed 1999 constitution, um, has a right to contest for the presidency of this country. You know, but for me, uh, I, I, I would say this, that that um, we should grow above the, above situations where we think that everything around about this country revolves about around one man, you know, or it revolves around you because you feel that um, you have fought for democracy, so you say you feel you've been one time governor, and then you feel that you know the next thing is to become a president. Um, it is normal doing political campaigns and all of that politicians to say all sorts of things, make all sorts of promises. But um, when the chips are on the ground, we, 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 we begin to find out that everything they have said is just, um, you know, talking and talking and talking. Now, for Bola to have said this, um, I would say that um, I don't see what Bola is bringing new to the system because he's already part of this government that is going out. He's the national leader of the a uh, APC. And he's also... Um, you know, in the kitchen cabinet of this administration. So, if Nigerians are not happy with what has happened, what has played out with APC in the last uh, seven years plus or, or thereabout, I wonder what he's really bringing new. And I wonder why he feels, you know, that Nigerians really, really need him. What Nigerians need right now is a young, vibrant leader, a man with focus, a man with vision. All right, young, vibrant leader, uh, a man with focus and a man with vision. Uh, thank you, Francis Chilaka. Shola Oyekomi is on, uh, joining us via phone. Uh, Shola, uh, do you agree with Bola Ametinbu, who says he is well educated, he is sound, and he has what it takes to fix Nigeria, and Nigeria needs him? Shola, are you there, please? Uh, yeah, I'm here. My position. On what um, Ashimaji Mbola met him uh, when he met with the uh, um, is well, I think he has the right. Uh, first of all, let's establish that contest, just like any Nigerian, has the right to contest for um, elective office. And uh, the fact that uh, he has also been 
um, a two-time governor of Lagos and um, a former speaker in Lagos State, um, also gives him um, some bragging rights um, you know, to say what he says. Um, but whether I agree with him or not, um, is neither here nor there, because um, anyone who is vying for a position actually has the right um, to sell himself, uh, to market himself, and to sell himself, you know, in order to, to get what he wants at the end of the day. Um, I think that's why people are to uh, is already in campaign mode, um, so you would hear such things from him, just like you would hear from other aspirants or candidates who are contesting for either the presidency or other elective positions that are open in the forthcoming 2020 uh, general election. Um, so, I mean, to ask me about who we need is trying to put me on the spot right now. Um, however, uh, the man is in campaign mode, so it is expected that we hear, you know, um, sort of things from him. There's not no surprises there. There's no, 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 Shola, sorry to interrupt you. Yes, Shola, sorry to interrupt you. But I, I, I want a point blank answer from you, your opinion. Just like Francis Chileka says, Nigerians need a young and visionary leader. Of course, a visionary, we can talk about that as far as Tinubu is concerned. He said he's visionary. Young, he certainly ain't young. Does, in your opinion, Nigeria need Bola Metinbu as its president? I will just, I will just be very upfront. Nigeria needs everybody, every Nigerian. Uh, we all have different roles. Um, we've had examples of leaders in this country, presidents in this country, who have, in president, I think have gone wrong. We have examples of servants or regular Nigerians, market leaders, and all that, who have gotten things right, and others who have gotten things wrong. But the truth is that Nigeria needs them. Nigeria to succeed. Um, but to ask me if Nigeria needs Bola Metinubu just like I said Bola Metinubu has changed, yes, Nigeria needs him. But the question is, does Nigeria need him as our president? That is for the electorate to answer. And that question will be answered at the 2020 election. Uh, what actually Bola Metinubu talked about, I mean, said, uh, there's a context in which you want to understand. He was speaking to Speakers and former speakers who are APC members. And uh, whatever I said to them was saying it um, towards getting the ticket of the party uh, to contest for the presidency. Hmm. All right, all right. Uh, uh, back to you, uh, Francis. Um, uh, Bola Metinu was previously said, especially at the time uh, when he went to pay that, that famous visit to Mr. President at Asorok Villa. Uh, to inform Mr. President of his decision to contest for the position for the ticket uh, of the presidential ticket of the APC. He also did say that he was not yet ready to inform Nigerians. So we're still waiting for Bola Metinbu to tell Nigerians that he wants to be president. But um, uh, he said one thing which was striking, that this has been a dream for him uh, as an individual. This has been a dream for him to be the president of Nigeria. So looking at that statement, his intent, his dream, his, his desire to be the president of Nigeria. Is this, in your opinion, from your analysis of all he said, then and now, is this more about Bola Metinobu fulfilling his lifelong dream for that satisfaction or Nigerians actually needing him amidst the situation in the country? Uh, well, when, it, when, when a man wakes up from sleep and uh, washes his face, and uh, comes out and greets the, the public, you know that, yes, he's doing that, you know, conscious of his environment. Uh, Bala Tunumbu has been very conscious of his environment. He's very, he's been very articulate. He's been very sincere with uh, himself and those who have been listening to him. He has come out to tell Nigerians that his life dream is to be the president of this country. So whatever anybody says doesn't matter to him. It's not about Nigerians. And this is where I have a problem with his candidacy. Or his aspiration. It's not about the people. It's about him. It's about greed. It's about selfishness. He's talking about himself, that this is his dream. I mean, everybody is entitled to a dream. But when your dream begins to consume you, you begin to lose the reality of what is going on. Nigerians today 
are tired of people who want to be leaders because it is their dream. Nigerians today, Nigerians today are looking for leaders who would take them out of what we found ourselves in. We're looking for a leader who can stand upright to defend the lives and properties of Nigerians. If you open the newspaper every day, you own your television, you own your radio, what do you hear? All you hear is about killings, death, kidnapping. So Nigerians are looking for somebody who has a solution and not somebody whose dream is to become a president. Because what it means is that once he's made the president, he goes back to sleep to continue his dream. But we don't want a dreamer. We want somebody who would be able to match words for action. Shala Yekomi, do you agree with Francis Chilaka on that point, you know, of Bola Abetinbu having this lifelong dream and ambition? Do you think it's more about fulfilling that ambition or actually rising to occasion because Nigerians need him? Shola? Well, um, it's difficult to uh, agree or disagree, uh, so to speak, What I can just tell you, what I know and I ask you, is that yes, it is true that um, Ashwai Kola has told us, um, after informing the that he intends to speak um, for election, I mean, he has to go for election for the office of the president. And he also made us know that it is light on the ambition. That is on one, on one side. The other side, to answer the question, or ask the question, if Patrick Bola makes no move, um, he's qualified. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's qualified to run for justice of president. Uh, because, number one, at the contest stage, there's nothing that stops him constitution from contesting. Um, you know, if you look at this age, his qualification in terms of education, yes, over time, he has contested for that before, and he must have submitted for the constitution which allows him for him to run for those conversations right now. Uh, in terms of experience, he has that experience. Um, but now, he, what people are talking about, they are looking for a young ambitionary leader and all that. I've heard that. I mean, I'm doing this victory. Um, whether Shivaji Bala Ahmed will be comes president or another person will become president, um, I'm not bothered about that. I'm not bothered about somebody who the emerge as our president and turn things around. Um, and so I can, well, I met you, um, I've been part of the government of APC since 2015. Um, yes, he didn't hold a political office or political appointment, but he has been the national leader of the APC. He's one of the pioneer members of the APC, one of the, you know, leading founders of the APC. So, which means that whatever it is that has gone right in the last seven years, whatever it is that has gone wrong in the last seven years, uh, he has, he's part of, uh, you know, that old team, and I'm sure he shares in that collective responsibility. For our failures, or our processes, or our achievements, as Nigeria, as they, uh, you know, as Nigeria, and as having been achieved by whatever it is that this government has achieved, or are still that doing. We need to start focusing on these issues. And, I would, I believe, as well as, as well as Dibala and Dumbu and other aspirants should start talking about the issues. The number one issue in Nigeria right now is the issue of security. Number two is the issue of the economy, which has taken a downturn. And that's very serious. The inflation, galloping inflation that we have right now is killing Nigeria businesses, that kills the middle class entirely, and, um, you know, the market has suffered. And those are more impoverished. And they were in 2014. Um, things are really bad. I would expect that, you know, the aspirants, uh, in particular, who start speaking to those issues right now, and um, leave the issue of, um, you know, whether they are qualified or not. I mean, we know he's qualified, we know he's eligible. But let him, let him start telling us how to do things differently from what we have been doing in the last seven years. I mean, we, we know why we are here. Uh, we know that the situation is fast, and we need to move forward and move us on this bad situation that we are in right now. All right. So All right. let us raise the issues. Thank you. All right. I'll stay with you, uh, Ashlaw Yekomi. Um, 
Of course, like you said rightly, so uh, Bola Vecino was speaking at an event held in Lagos uh, for uh, uh, current and past speakers and deputy speakers uh, elected on the platform of the APC. Um, that event was held in Lagos, where Bola Betinbu was governor uh, from 1999 to 2007. And he made a spend no effort in, in reminding or informing uh, those at that event and all who cared to read the reports that, um, you know, uh, he has all it takes to make Nigeria prosper, uh, that he had done it in the past in Lagos State and that he could replicate it in Nigeria as a whole. Uh, Shalau Yekomi, did Bola Metinbu radically transform Lagos and make it prosperous in his eight years in office as governor? And what legacy did he leave behind? Well, thank you very much for that question. Um, I think I've been in particularly Lagos um, when uh, well, I got to move to the of Lagos State. Uh, I'm still here. Um, my experience over the years, um, you know, from certain governments, I assume that they are built from successes and they are built from failures. Yes, all of this global, as governor of Lagos State from 1999 to 2007, did do a lot. He succeeded in some areas. But on the other hand, um, I would say, that we didn't quite achieve some of the things that he set out to achieve. Um, one of the things he did was also to have a good succession plan, um, which has been executed perfectly by the party. Uh, are, are, you, are, you, are you seriously? Uh, Shola Yekomi, uh, uh, Shola uh, Yekomi, uh, Yekom, sorry to uh, interrupt you. Uh, yeah, Shola, are you there? Now, yeah, are, are you telling us that the achievement of Bola Metunibu uh, as governor of Lagos State was to have a, a good succession plan. It, it, are you presenting that to Nigerians as his, his, his legacy or score mark or, of achievements, record of achievements as governor in Lagos State? Uh, you know, what I can tell you is that um, that is one of his achievements, one of his noticeable achievements that we can actually point to immediately. Um, the other is the issue of the salary generated revenue that was moved from um, 600 million, you know, when he got into office and became what it is today, which is about 40 billion per month or thereabouts. Um, I do not hold this for a certain investment. I cannot speak to him, uh, speak for him, brother. Uh, I'm sure there are people who start to report me, uh, post person and campaign um, officials who can actually speak for him as that's his achievement. But what I'm saying is that. Uh, the man has a pedigree. Uh, he ran a Lagos state that became one of the most, uh, that became the most performing state in the country. Okay, uh, so, 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 so you, you say, you're saying that Bola Metinubu um, had a good succession plan. Uh, I've written that down. That was his achievement. Then you're saying that he was able to increase the internally generated revenue in Lagos State. But you know, Lagos State, <laughs> he, he came in to meet no civilian administration. So they were starting from scratch. So when you say he increased the IGR, um, you want to compare that to military era? Well, What's I, the benchmark? I, I, I wouldn't want to compare that to military era. But well, you cannot say that he started from scratch. Because you cannot tell me that Lagos State was not the issue that before 1999. Yeah, but, but, but are, are, you, are, are, are you benchmarking that, that against the military, military administration? It doesn't matter. Okay. Whether it's the military or not, I'm not saying for us, because under the military, he did not experience oil boom under the military, but not generating revenue under the military. So, so what, 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 was, what was the IGR used for, you know, because I'm, I'm also expecting you to tell me these are his achievements. Apart from, you know, generating internally, uh, increased internal revenue is not really an achievement. It's about what you use, what, what that enables you to do. So, uh, what did he, Bola Metinubu, in his eight years of, as governor, use that increased IGR to accomplish? Which is what I told you earlier on. I do not hold me for Bola Metinubu. I will not um, speak for him as a guy that But I, I only point out that I like most things that are noticeable. 
uh, which anybody in the public can actually say that was achieved under his um, administration. Um, so I won't go down and ask anyone to give it to this No, but that, but that is what this is about. Shall I hear me? That is what this is about. If you're saying that, uh, I, it seems to you're struggling and clutching, you know, to, to try and get uh, something to, to put out as his achievements. And I'm asking you again, what did he achieve? Yeah. Because he's told his legislators that Lagos State became prosperous and he can replicate that in Nigeria. Now, the, the viewers are listening, are watching, and these are the voters who have to decide. You're an analyst. In your opinion, you live in Lagos State. What did he do? Number one, he said he had a good succession plan, and that is an achievement. Okay. Number two, you said he increased in tenant generated revenue. I asked you, what is that benchmark against that? You've answered the question. Number three, I asked, what was the increase IGR used to achieve? Because increasing IGR on its own is not an achievement, except you use it to do what it's supposed to be used for. Okay. What I'll tell you is on that last point that you mentioned, on what the IGR was used for. There are several infrastructure developments that took place in Lagos State. Okay. Um, road okay. judges, school judges, um, residential estate judges. Um, there was a, I mean, uh, 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 it said, um, what do you call it? The one in the vegetation where that is behind me right now. Uh, that was also done. There were several other things that were done. Uh, that was education as well. Especially education. Okay. Okay. Uh, and other developments that were done. All right. All right. Shall, um, I, shall I, before, before I go. Yeah, before I go to our next, uh, next, uh, next, um, uh, 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 yeah, to, to back to Francis, what did, what did, um, uh, uh, maybe let's look at Fashola who, who succeeded Tinubu. What were Fashola's achievements yeah. as governor of Lagos State? Fashola's achievements as governor of Lagos State? Yes. There was a lot that was achieved under Fashola. It was man about the time, the uh, for infrastructure development as well. Give me some. Roads, and administration as well, in terms of administration. Because we know that a lot of agencies were set up on that game. Uh, certain services, social services were provided and uh, put in place on, on that game as well. So one could speak to a lot of things that were also yeah, Just, just that. throw uh, some of them at me. Maybe give me a few of what, what, what uh, Fashola achieved. I didn't get that. Yeah, so what are these things that Fashola did? Oh, I mentioned some of them already. A lot of social services that were put in place. Even some of the agencies and process houses that were set up for that year. The rule of law, the judiciary, you know, and all that. A lot of things were done on that particular. There are also infrastructure. Roads were built, roads were expanded. You all know, right. um, there was also development as well. That was done. The current Lagos was that the project was started on that particular. Mm. So, so uh, th th thank you, Shola. It was just a, a test to see how easy was going to be for you to reel out the accomplishments of, uh, uh, um, of uh, Fashola's governor, of Babatunde Fashola's governor of Lagos State, because when it came to Tinubu, there were lots of arms coming from you, which means that you were sort of struggling to, to put some things out apart from increased IGR, and you started from a succession plan, which to me is not an achievement anyway. Um, uh, but 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 you're entitled to your opinion. But but it was easier. So it was easier for you to reel out. I'm mm. sure if I gave you a full scap or a plain sheet mm. A4 to write down Fashola's achievement, you be you find it easier. Doing it in shorter time than 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 Tinubu. So what is the brew ha ha about? Maybe maybe uh, Fashola should be the one vying for president. I don't know. So so that's why I asked you what transformation mm. did he accomplish as governor of Lagos State that he wants to replicate in Nigeria. But you've answered and you gave me only two, namely, or three. You talked about IGR, I, 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 infrastructure, I, 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 including some schools and all that. But you were, you were finding it hard to do. But I'll go to Francis Chilaka. Francis, uh, what do you say about this whole talk that he was able to transform Lagos State and he will replicate that in Nigeria? Well, what when is Timbo's legacy? When you talk about transformation, um, I, I, I've always been asking people um, what are the transformation that he did, or you know, because the only thing I noticed that was transformation was uh, the fight he had with the federal government creating extra local governments and um, you know insisting on it. Uh, but in terms of uh, infrastructure, I don't see any. You know, we 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 need to tell ourselves the truth. My problem with all the governors we've had. 
uh, in all those Baptist states is that they are always um, too quick and too um, eager to talk about their uh, successes, which is known to them alone, and, not, and the people don't know it. Like, like you rightly said, if we talk about Fashola, you see, when people talk about a succession plan, I laugh. When um, Mr. Peter Obi finished his tenure as governor of um, Anambra State, he had a succession plan. And that was uh, Obiano. What came out of it? It's not about it's not about succession plan. It's about the individual. What the person has to offer. What the person, the vision and the mission statement of the individual. So it has nothing to do with anybody saying, "Oh, I made him governor. I made you." You can make somebody governor, and the person will embarrass and disgrace you. You can make somebody governor, and then the person would come out with his whole heart to know that he is working for the people. For me, I don't have anything against Ola Ahmed Tumbu, but I'll say this to him, you know, if he would listen. Um, Ola Ahmed Tumbu would have been better staying as a political leader, somebody uh, of, his own, of his own courage, somebody people can come to, you know, since he's a man that has so much knowledge about politicking and uh, staying in power and how to win elections. All right. That would have been a better thing for him too. You know, but at his age now, Nigeria is not looking for somebody of his age. We're looking for people that are younger. All right. People, uh, we're moving, we're moving we're in the 21st century, where, where everything has got computerized. So we're looking for somebody who has that energy to right. dissipate, uh, that energy uh, to Francis, bring forth. Yeah, Francis Chilaka. Yeah. Do, do you feel that um, uh, the, the, uh, the gentleman, uh, Shiraji Bola Tinubu, uh, uh, Jagaban, as he's called, um, and his supporters and his admirers are always eager to shine on the achievements of Fashola. Yes, well, that is because when you, well, that is what is playing out. That is what is playing out. Everybody said, oh, he made Fashola a governor. And everything governor, everything Fashola did was as Paul Atunumbu planned it. And then I asked myself, if that is it, we all know who made this president today the president of this country. Paul Atunumbu was part of those who made him a president. How come he has not been able to, you know, bring the same knowledge, same wisdom, the same strength into this present government? How, how come he has not been able to do that? So, it, it, it's, it's a, like, I, like I said earlier, it's a different thing for you to say you've made somebody a governor, you've made somebody a president. The thing is that that person has his own free will to decide how he wants to move. Fatula could have come and been like any other governor, like the ones we have presently, but Fatula came and he worked. And people saw a man with a lot of energy, a youthful, a youthful, like, um, youthful man that had, some, that had a vision and that had a, a political will to change. And a lot of things. That is what Nigeria needs now. We need somebody who has a political will to 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 take to take decisions and save Nigerians, protect the lives and protect property of Nigerians. All right. Uh, back to Shola Yekobi. Shola, do you do you f feel uh, that it's 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 right for uh, Shiwaju and his supporters and admirers um, to take credit for the achievements of Abatunde Raji Fashola, who was his successor? Why not? Why not? Have you forgotten that the first person was the first of staff? Have we forgotten so soon? Have we forgotten that the uh, popular call within the party, Ola Tinubu pushed um, Raji Fashola for the ticket of 2007? Have we forgotten so soon that Raji Fashola our Why can they not pay credit for whatever you are doing? All right, you're talking about what we shouldn't forget, Shola. Why can they not pay credit for whatever you are doing right now? All right, so Shola, 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 so can you also remember, Shola, um, that it's a collective responsibility. Shola, yeah, can we can 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 should we also remember? Should we remember that Fashola was lucky to even go for a second term? Uh, after this uh, political altercation with um, uh, 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 Tinubu, who had to later accept but, all the pleas, and then um, and Fashola was able to go for a second term. But eventually, eventually, 
Okay, all right. That, that, that being said, yeah, that being said, that being said, since we're talking about taking credit, should should uh, Tinubu also take credit for the failures uh, we, we're seeing in yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in recent years? Uh, Agberos everywhere on the streets. Uh, the motorcycles that, that, that were in Okadas that were banned are back on the streets. Increased insecurity, empowerment of, of Agberos and touts. Um, who are harassing commercial drivers and private drivers on the streets and uh, the, 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 the fitting away and, and, and the decay of the infrastructures of state that you mentioned that fascist set up that are going down. Um, Lagos State is becoming dirtier uh, by the hour. Uh, the traffic situation in Lagos State is, 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 is terrible. So should, should Tinu take credit for, for that as well? Yes, yes, it would, it would, it's a collective response that I said that earlier when we started this uh, conversation. I made it very clear. As one of our men, I've had a successive platform. But he has managed to ensure that the service are elected as governor after any So, whatever feelings or achievements that have come with those elections or with those administrations, he is responsible as well as whoever is you know, the state governor. Uh, is also responsible. The APC is responsible. It's a collective responsibility. But it should be giving credit to whatever achievements and to also be held responsible for whatever credit okay. as of course over time. Thank you very much. Uh, Ashala Yekomi, for your time, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, Francis Chilaka as well, sincerely appreciate it. And both of them are oh, political well. analysts and they've been a guest on the first uh, topic right here on Plus Politics. Thank you, gentlemen. Staying with us, we'll take a short break, and when we return, the Independent National Electoral Commission has declared about 45% of new voter registrations invalid. This is up for discussion when we return.